Now you can get the same uncompromising truth you've come to expect from the Final Call newspaper on all your connected devices. Subscribe to the Final Call Digital Edition today. Go to subscribe.finalcalldigital.com. Greetings, dear listeners. We have been blessed by Almighty God, Allah, over the 90 years of our work in the nation of Islam and lifting our people up from the miserable condition in which we find ourselves. We ask your support of our effort and we hope that you will be generous and make a contribution to the work of the Nation of Islam and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan by clicking the button below or go to noi.org forward slash donate. We thank you in advance for your support. May Allah God continue to bless you and your families. Assalamu alaikum. This house is dedicated to knowledge and to the spreading of knowledge. Elijah Muhammad inspired new thought, new mind, new way of civilization among black people. But he wanted a house from which a light could be lifted up to give guidance to all who would be guided as this world begins to close down. This national center for the re-education and retraining of the black man and woman, but for the totality of the human family of our planet. I named this mosque after the only woman that the Quran names a chapter after. The mother of Jesus, Maryam. All human beings need to be re-educated. That is the purpose of the National Center. Assalamu alaikum and peace be unto you. Brothers and sisters, we want to begin this morning's meeting in prayer. Wherever you are, please stand. Attention prayer. Surely I have turned myself to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright, to him who originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not of the polytheist. Surely my prayer and my sacrifice my life and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he in this and my commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant. I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. And I ask protection against all of my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me unto the best of morals. For none guides unto the best of morals but thee, and turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals. For none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. O Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true followers of Muhammad successful as thou did make Abraham, and the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praised and magnified. And O Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters, wherever you are. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I greet my brothers and sisters in the greeting words of peace. We say it in our original tongue of Arabic, the language of our ancestors, assalamu alaikum, which means peace be unto you. Brothers and sisters, welcome to your nation of Islam. Every week that we have the opportunity 
to share with you the life-giving teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught and represented by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, it enlivens us, it strengthens us, and it brings us so much joy because we know that if you apply what we have been given, it will drastically improve the quality of your life. People can say many things about the Nation of Islam, but one thing that is not up for debate is our proven, proven track record of the Nation of Islam's ability to transform human life. These teachings have and these teachings are cleaning up drug dealers and drug users. It helps the mothers and the fathers to become better parents. It teaches men how to respect and protect our women and respect and protect themselves as well. It helps the woman to properly love herself and to live a respectful lifestyle. We eat better, we think better, we speak better, and it makes us love our people not to death, but love our people to life. And this is why in the book of John chapter 10 verse, uh, verse 10, it says, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Many of us may have heard this scripture before, but that is only half of the verse. In the beginning of that verse, it gives to us another type of person where it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So while one is promoting life and love for ourselves, there is another that is promoting death. Because if the promoters of death allow for the one who is promoting life to do what he does, then the, wor the world of the promoters of death will become non-existence. To love our people to life in a world that profits from death, that is what leads to conflict. Last week in Minister Ishmael Muhammad's lecture entitled Farrakhan and Satan's Rage, he lifted a verse from the Holy Quran, chapter 61, verse eight. And it says, they desire to put out the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah will perfect his light, though the disbelievers may be averse. We must ask ourselves, why do they try to put out the light of Allah with their mouths? Allah is revealing to us in the Holy Quran how they will approach and what tactics they intend to use. They have to try and use words because if you were to weigh the information presented, do your research and fact check what the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has said, you will see for yourself that he is 100% right and exact. And this is why our opposers refuse to have a dialogue with us and present evidence that can prove us wrong. They will have a conversation with everyone else, but they all go ghost when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, let's have a showdown and bring the facts to the table. So all they are left to do is to resort to propaganda. One of the most commonly used techniques of propaganda is a tactic called name calling. Name calling, according to this article, is a technique used to invoke fear in those exposed to the propaganda, resulting in the formation of a negative opinion, not fact, opinion, about a person, group, or set of beliefs or ideas. So they never offer substance or evidence to show what we say is not true. They only use trigger words and throw around labels to invoke fear. They're anti this, they're anti that. And if you agree with them, then you'll be anti this or anti that. So they use fear to push us in, the direction, in their direction, but notice that they never deal with the actual facts of the statement. But keep in mind that this verse also ends saying that Allah will perfect his light though the disbelievers be averse. So if you peruse through social media and look at all of the comments from the various posts over the last couple of weeks, not of the Muslims, but of the common man, you will see that they are not falling for the okie doke in this day and time. Many people are saying, quote, this is why we need our own networks. Another one said, this is why we need our own platforms because the people are sick of the enemy hiding the truth. Their time is up and their world is coming to a close. It is now time for a new day. And that new day is represented by your nation of Islam. The kingdom of God will be established and it is based in freedom, justice, and equality. To carry us to the next portion of today's program, brothers and sisters, it's a little awkward because he's been feeding us so many delicious spiritual meals over the last several months during quarantine and even before then. Uh, but to carry us further into the program and to introduce our keynote speaker for this morning, please help me to receive the national assistant to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, our beautiful brother, student minister, Ishmael Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, brother Daniel. <clears throat> 
In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I thank Allah for his many blessings, his many gifts, his goodness, his mercy. I thank him for the gift of life, the blessing of my parents. I thank Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad and for raising from the black man of America, his messenger Messiah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and from the black man of America, giving to the honorable Elijah Muhammad a great helper in the cause of freedom, justice, and equality, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I greet all of you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Dear brothers and sisters, I have the honor of introducing today one of the great helpers and witnesses of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, my sister and our sister, student minister Ava Mohammed, the national spokesperson for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We're delighted to have her. We know that she has much to say, especially after the monumental message that we all heard on the 4th of July. That message of the minister continues to reverberate. That message has sparked a storm of controversy. That message unveiled the enemy, unmasked Satan, revealing his identity. And it is this revealing of Satan, this revealing of the son of perdition that has the enemy so upset and what is upsetting him even more than the unveiling, which is enough, but it's the outpour of love and support for the man that he hates, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So the devil is mad, but I'm glad because he lost that soul that he thought he had. We have our brothers, celebrities and artists that's a part of what is making the enemy so upset because they came out on their social media platforms in support of their brother and teacher whom they love, whom they have learned and are learning so much from. All of these headlines from the Jewish Journal and all of these periodicals that are upset over Deshaun Jackson's statement and Ice Cube's statement. Our brother Stephen Jackson and Nick Cannon. But I want to caution us. We know the enemy's aim is to divide us. Nick Cannon is our brother. Stephen Jackson is our brother. Deshaun Jackson is our brother. Ice Cube is our brother. Charlemagne, the God, is our brother. And they are being unfairly attacked because they dare to support the truth coming from the mouth of their brother, Minister Farrakhan. So they're being punished, they're being penalized for associating themselves with a good man, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So I would advise us not to be so harsh, not to be so critical 
with our brothers because the aim of the enemy is to have us fight each other. These brothers are making a strong stand. They need our support. And if they don't say what you think is best they should say in response to the enemy, hold your criticism. These are our brothers. We should send the message to the enemy, hands off Farrakhan, hands off Sean Combs, hands off Nick Cannon, Charlemagne the God, Stephen Jackson, Ice Cube, Deshaun Jackson. Get your hands off of our brothers and our people. So with that, <laughs> I want to lift this scripture as we bring before you a sister who needs no introduction. There is a verse from the Bible, from the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, the 10th verse. It reads, you are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. Here's the mention of witnesses along with one that God has chosen for himself. That servant, my servant in this verse, it refers to the man of God, the anointed of God, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan, but he has witnesses and we are happy to defend our brother minister Farrakhan. Sister Ava Mohammed, student minister Ava Mohammed is a warrior and has a long track record in defending her teacher and her brother. So I close with this verse from the Quran. It's the 113th chapter, which is also a prayer, one of the refuge prayers. And it reads in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn from the evil of that which he has created and from the evil of intense darkness when it comes and from the evil of those who cast evil suggestions in firm resolution and from the evil of the envier when he envies. Darkness is overspreading, but when the night falls, the stars come out. And the stars are the witnesses of a very bright light that is in the heavens. I'm so happy and honored and humbled to present to some and to present to others one of the great stars of the nation of Islam, one of the great witnesses and defenders of truth and the man of truth, her brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Without further ado, help me to receive the student national spokesperson for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, student minister, Ava Muhammad. May Allah bless you. <laughs> In the most holy name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, we thank Allah for ever and ever for coming to us here in North America, the black man and woman, and raising in our midst his Messiah, his Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. 
Allah came to us not as wind or air, but in the person of a man, Master Farid Muhammad. And we are so grateful to him for using his supreme wisdom and power to initiate the process of the removal of Satan's world once and for all by raising up the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a grandson of slaves, a descendant of black people who had been held in bondage in captivity for more than 400 years, thus fulfilling the promise that God made to Abraham in the book of Genesis. But I have no way of knowing how we can ever thank Allah enough and his Christ for giving us spiritual life, light and heat, a light giving sun in the prime example of obedience to his will, the fruit of his spirit, relentless in hurling truth at falsehood. And I'm speaking of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And in those names, I greet my beloved brothers and sisters and all who are listening in the words of peace of I salam alaikum. Before I go any further, I want to first thank my teacher, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, for not only all that he has done for black people, but for all that he has done for me and my family. He literally saved my life through the word of truth when I was suffering from cancer and on chemotherapy. I was one of those elementary school children in 1962 who lined up to drink the polio vaccine. The polio vaccine contained one of the most powerful carcinogens ever known. And while it eradicated polio, it brought in an epidemic of cancer. And beloved, as I stand before you today, grateful and humble for my life, I must tell you that I am equally grateful that Allah is destroying this wicked world and bringing in his world. We have suffered and been destroyed in a multitude of ways by the enemy of God. But thanks to Allah, thanks to his Christ, and thanks to the strength and the willingness to lay down his own life of Minister Louis Farrakhan, I and many like me continue to stand. My entire family, my father, lung cancer, my mother, my two sisters, myself, breast cancer. I grew up in a little community in Columbus, Ohio, that was reminiscent of what you might have seen in 1950s and 60s television programs, on the white programs with the manicured lawns and children riding their bikes. We had our own schools that we could walk to. Just as they wiped us out in Tulsa, Oklahoma, white America gets envious and jealous when black people are happy. And in the case of my little community, Eastgate, founded and developed by black people returning from World War II. Many of my classmates and friends' fathers were members of the Tuskegee Airmen. We were teachers and doctors and lawyers and landscapers, janitors, postal carriers. 
and all of us live comfortably and in peace. But all of that can never remain permanent as long as we live with and among God's enemy. So I thank Allah so much for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. But I want to also thank my brother, my colleague, my friend, Brother Student Minister Ishmael Muhammad, the National Assistant to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He has carried the word on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam from the moment that the COVID-19 virus resulted in America shutting the country down. But he has not only come here and delivered lectures, he has effectively defended and advanced the work of the Nation of Islam. I can't think of a better word than Minister Farrakhan himself used about Brother Ishmael's messages. He used the term impeccable. And so we shouldn't be surprised when last Sunday, when Minister Ishmael returned to the rostrum after the delivery by Minister Farrakhan of the criterion that the enemy would interfere with and interrupt that message. But the minister said this to me. He said, sister, they have ways, but we have the way. You're not stopping this. And I think, well, first of all, we all heard Brother Student Minister Ishmael's message, I want you to know. And secondly, I think the criterion has reached close to, if not uh, over, three million views. Three million views. And that does not encompass the number of people viewing the same device together. So my message today is the law of God, part one, and Allah willing, I'll be back in August for part two. I want you to bear with me. I will be up here a minute. It won't be three hours. <laughs> but there are just some points I must get across. What happened on July 4th that, as Brother Minister Ishmael's message stated last week, threw Satan into a rage? I open with chapter 25 of the Holy Quran, El Furqan, the discrimination. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, blessed is he who sent down the discrimination upon his servant that he might be a warner to the nations. He whose is the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, and who did not take to himself a son, and who has no associate in the kingdom, and who created everything, then ordained for it a measure. And they take besides him gods who create not, while they themselves are created. And they control for themselves no harm nor profit. And they control not death nor life nor raising to life. And those who disbelieve say, this is nothing but a lie which he has forged. And other people have helped him at it. So indeed they have brought an iniquity and a falsehood. They say stories of the ancients which he has got written. So they are read out to him morning and evening. Say, he has revealed it. He who knows the secret 
of the heavens and the earth. Surely he is ever forgiving, merciful. And they say, what a messenger is this? He eats food. He goes about in the market. Why has not an angel been sent down to him to be a warner with him or a treasure given to him or a garden from which to eat? And the evildoers say, you follow, but a man bewitched. See what parables they set forth for you? They have gone astray, so they cannot find a way. What I just read, beloved, this is where we are. Farrakhan, Furkan, the discrimination, the criterion, two words that are very similar but not exactly the same. They describe both him and they describe what he is doing in real time, not yesterday, today. The translators sometimes use the two words interchangeably, calling the 25th chapter of the Holy Quran in English the discrimination or the criterion. And it's okay because the man you heard from is both. The discrimination discriminates, he differentiates, he separates, he distinguishes truth from falsehood. On July 4th, he gave the inhabitants of the earth the criterion from Allah, the standard by which differentiation is made, given by the Lord of the worlds as a gift, a specially made helper, an answer to a prayer from Allah's beloved messenger Messiah, the honorable Elijah Muhammad, who told Minister Farrakhan, not once, not twice, but three times in the presence of others, in the midst of giving his young minister a verbal whipping, he said these words, you are second only to myself. So on the 4th of July, the day white America celebrates her independence from the British monarchy, Minister Farrakhan announced to the nations of the world our independence from white America and from anything that is besides Allah. He also released the whole of humanity from the chains of falsehood by giving a clear message of divine truth. He said in his opening, my teacher told me one day that if there were any symbol that he could use to represent his work, it would be a trumpet. He made me his trumpet. God made me his mouthpiece. And so today in the garden, inshallah, I will deliver to you a message not from beneath, but from on high. I thank Allah for my teacher. This was a warning, as the Holy Quran just stated, to the nations, the world, an announcement. Someone asked me uh, over the internet during our study group session last Friday, when are we going to have or why hasn't the minister called a million man march? No. The sun moves on to its destination, reads the Holy Quran. We're undergoing the end of an evolutionary process. 25 years ago, Minister Farrakhan called the Million Man March for a very specific reason, to call back the black man 
the original man, the maker, the owner, cream of the planet earth, God of the universe to atone for what he did and failed to do that caused him to come under the chastisement of Allah and to seek forgiveness, not only from Allah, but from his woman and his children. And make a commitment that from that day forward, October 16th, 1995, he would return to himself. He is the protector. He is the provider. He is the original man. Now, 25 years later, we have moved to an entirely different level. That was preparatory. He came July 4th, Minister Farrakhan, to make it known that the great transformation is not coming, it is taking place. The universal change is taking place that he spoke of on July 4th. This transformation has already been in motion and the Million Man March was an overwhelming event and demonstration of Allah's power to bring in a transformation. And frankly, it was his introduction to the world of his Messiah. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad was Messiah in our midst, and we did not recognize him. He has advanced to a God. Now, ultimately, this transformation will extend over the entire globe. All nations who submit to the will of God who obey the law of God will benefit. If you submit, you will benefit. But if you do not, not only will you not benefit, you will not even be here. There is no transformation without divine revelation. We have to come out of, once and for all, beloved, the slave mentality of spookism and worship of the made race. Allah condemns this in chapter 25, discrimination. He hates polytheism of any kind, but most of all that we would bow to the rule of Satan, his arch enemy. We're bowing to creatures who have no control over themselves. Look at America. The law of God ensures that our first need is met. Every human being is born with a primary need, and that need is to be made secure. And it is obedience to the law of God that provides us with that security. Divine law is the means through which Allah ensures that the universe and everything in it obeys his will. Disobedience to divine law results in spiritual death and is followed by an untimely physical death. He states in the Holy Quran, I give life and I cause death. Death then is not a cause, it's an effect. The cause of it is Allah. And we all will eventually have to experience it. I don't even like to think about it. But we take comfort in knowing that Allah created that law that gives all things in the physical realm of his universe a beginning and an end. His spirit, his power, his will are all eternal. And if we lock into his spirit, his will, then we are eternal. But physical death is ordained and it allows new life. 
that facilitates Allah's goal of bringing the world to eventual perfection. So there is only so much anybody can do to you and I, because we're just at the beginning of the threats and the attacks on us. But remember, nothing can happen to us unless Allah wills it or he permits it. And he doesn't permit anything that doesn't serve his objective of perfection. Minister Farrakhan has taught us that Master Farid Muhammad's vision is a nation of gods. Now, what is a nation of gods? It is a people who organize and have power to bring what they envision into existence. One characteristic we must acquire in the process of our growth from man to God, we must be truly interested in the well-being of all of Allah's creation. And we must study. A half-learned people cannot be what God wants. There is an arrogance that comes from knowing even a little. If we think we know everything or even most things, then our thinking becomes imbalanced. The acquisition of knowledge is a divine direction and it is an ever evolving process. As long as we live, we should be seeking knowledge. The minister said, quote, man is an underdeveloped God. Now what we are witnessing in the life of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is a demonstration. The Supreme God is actually showing us in a way that we can comprehend the actual method and means by which a man becomes a God. The process was completed in 2019. July the 4th, 2020, the world was introduced to the finished product and the inhabitants of the earth are experiencing the results. We are actually looking at God's work in Minister Louis Farrakhan. And if we can avail ourselves of what we have been given, and that's going to take all of us working together to fully comprehend him, then we can start to see the levels of advancement from man to God. Love of truth. See, Brother Ishmael spoke of us being witnesses. That's our assignment at this point in time. Witnesses to the truth. Well, being a witness to truth, obedient to God's messenger, these things give us the strength to be able to give truth the only thing truth needs, and that's a witness to it. When Minister Farrakhan stood up to rebuild the nation of Islam 43 years ago, he knew he was putting his life on the line. But he also knew that there could be no resurrection of a fallen nation of Islam without successfully lifting up and restoring the reputation of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, which had been ruined by hypocrites, disbelievers, and devils. He had the nearly impossible task of distinguishing truth from falsehood in a world immersed in and in love with lies. The willingness to lay down your life for the sake of truth, to say my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are surely all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. This puts one 
in the company of those who are given the gift of prophecy and in some cases chosen by Allah to speak to his people and express his will. O prophet, he says in the 33rd chapter of the Holy Quran, surely we have sent you as a witness, a bearer of good news and a warner, and as an inviter to Allah by his permission and as a light giving son. That is what the minister did. He began witnessing, bearing good news, serving as a warner, a reminder, an inviter to Allah by Allah's permission, and the nation came up out of darkness, came to life, because one man was completely unafraid to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. He raised up our flag. He brought back the fruit of Islam. He brought back the Muslim girls training and general civilization class. He founded and published the Final Call newspaper with the writings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the center and the Muslim program on the back page. He brought back Savior's Day. Our celebration of the great Mahdi, Master Farid Muhammad, his birth, February 26, 1877. And now we will celebrate that each and every year into eternity. He brought back the books and tapes of his teacher, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He declared the Honorable Elijah Muhammad lives not figuratively, but physically. He declared again, not only does the mother plane exist, but that Master Farid Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad are on it. And it remains poised, ready to destroy America at their command. And here's the minister working day and night. His family, those with him, working day and night. And there came a time, September of 1985, while he was in the midst of being slandered and defamed by the imposter Jews, that he had a vision-like experience wherein he was transported to the mother plane and given direct guidance from the honorable Elijah Muhammad. The very next year, 1986, he began releasing in the form of a series of units of study, a revelatory course that he named self-improvement, the basis for community development. This course, based on a speech he delivered in Phoenix, Arizona, September 21st, 1986, one year after his experience on the will. And I will lift up the following short excerpt from his letter of introduction dated December 12th, 1986. At this stage, he's a witness bearer. See, we learn through his life what we have to walk in order to get to where he is. He wrote, each study guide is designed on the guidance of Allah to produce self-examination, self-analysis, self-correction, and to quicken in each of us the self-accusing spirit. For it is only when we are awakened morally that we have to face the self-accusing spirit that leads to our resurrection. Resurrection is that process that begins with the self-accusing spirit and does not end until we become one in perfect harmony or peace with Allah and his creation. So the goal is perfect harmony or peace 
not only with Allah, but with his creation. If we can achieve that oneness, then we are a God. We'll never be the God, but we will be a God. And that brings me to the 16th unit of these guides that make up the course self-improvement. And the reason I'm lifting up this study guide from which I take the title of today's message, The Law of God, because in this unit, beloved, you are going to see very clearly that Minister Farrakhan was conferred with predictive power at least 30 years ago. And he has far exceeded where he was 30 years ago. To those of you over the age of 30, I ask you, are you the same person that you were 30 years ago? If you're 31 years old, you were one. You're not that baby that you were 30 years ago. In no way. Now, you can be a different person in a positive way or a negative way, but you absolutely are not the same person. But 30 years ago, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was already light years ahead of this world and its wisdom, and definitely light years ahead of all of us. This is why we have to be so careful now with how we think about him and how we treat him. Now, I want you to uh, listen to this excerpt from the letter. Now, I just read you the introduction to the course itself, which he wrote in 1986. Now, three years later, he gives us, he's gone through 15 units of study. Now he is on study guide 16. And I'm gonna show you something in a moment about the sequence of these study guides. But I'll just read these few paragraphs from this letter. And when you have the opportunity, read this letter, it is stunning in the range and depth of what it covers. Assalamu alaikum, after his salutation, he says, Assalamu alaikum. And this is June 15th, 1990. Dear believers and students, I am writing this letter to introduce study guide number 16, which I have entitled, The Law of God. Master Farid Muhammad, the great Mahdi, to whom praise is due forever, came to North America on July 4th, 1930, nearly 60 years ago, to declare our independence. He set up classes and gave instructions that would bring into reality a new kind of human being a human being that would become like a magnet so unlike this world that he or she would attract the people of this world to him or her. Master Farid Muhammad knew that at a certain time, there would be a level of dissatisfaction in the country so great it would demand a change. He also knew that out of dissatisfaction would come a leadership, listen, a leadership unlike what the people were dissatisfied with. He and his messenger would be at the forefront of that change and those wise enough to submit to their guidance would be the beneficiaries of that change. 
The mosque to us is as a home is to a family. It is the nurturing ground for virtue, character, the implantation of proper values and the molding of a righteous character. For what purpose? That we might break forth from the mosque at the proper time to take advantage of what had been created by Allah of total dissatisfaction with the kind of present day leadership. We stand here now, you and I, in the precise time that Master Farid Muhammad knew was coming and that the guidance that was given to Minister Farrakhan put in motion this course of study as a key part of our preparation to follow the guidance of, and then in turn, be the leadership of the people. You saw in the wake of the torture murder of our brother George Floyd, America poured into the streets. People of all walk of life. Now he said further, and I don't, I don't want to uh, get myself too deep into the letter. I want you to read it. It's, it's four pages. And I don't want to keep lifting excerpts because you need the total uh, context. But he did say that the dissatisfaction would affect people of all races and nationalities. So Allah and his Christ gave the minister the predictive power which only comes from clear vision given by Allah projected into this time. Now, five years later, he called the Million Man March, part of the preparation of black people in America to take on the leadership. What kind of leadership? He later writes in the letter that the leadership that the people want is divine leadership. Now, Let's fast forward to what he said on July 4th. Remember in the letter, total dissatisfaction. Now I'm quoting him from July 4th. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that 30% of the righteous 8,400 years ago, 30% of the population was dissatisfied. Whenever you have dissatisfaction, it produces a leader that brings about a change. Now remember in the letter, he said that Allah created this dissatisfaction. That's what you look for. A dissatisfaction created by Allah. Whenever you see something global, that's a law. This is a world right now steeped in nationalism, capitalism, division. But when something travels the globe, a law is in that. Because people protested not only in every city you can think of in the United States, but in Europe, in South America, in Africa, in Asia. Now, the dissatisfaction on earth, he continues today, he continues, I'm saying this statement, the dissatisfaction on our earth today is 100%. Everywhere you walk, everywhere you look, the people are dissatisfied. So when you have 100% dissatisfaction, there must be a 100% change. So those who are a part of this world, if you bow down, become part of what God makes new, 
or this is the end of your time to rule, the end of your time of leadership, the end of your time on this planet that was made by Allah for the righteous. So these words spoken 30 years apart, in them you see the development and evolution of a man from a witness bearer and never backing down from truth to having predictive power conferred upon him by which he could prepare a people. Now, the man who spoke July 4th has advanced from that. He has advanced from predictive power, which is what prophets have, to force and power, which is what Allah has. This should help us more deeply understand the rage, the discomfiture of Satan. Indeed, that's why Satan is lashing out and helping bring about his own exposure. Now you and I, and that's why the broadcast was disrupted. That's why the message was taken down from Revolt TV on YouTube. Now you and I are at level one. We're ready to be tested as witnesses of truth. Now we have this duty to bear this witness no matter and regardless of whom or what. In court, when you're called as a witness to testify on someone's behalf, your testimony weighs heavily on whether they will prevail. Because if your witnessing is ineffective or if it is taken apart by the opposition, then it compromises the position you've been asked to help facilitate. So when you stand up in court, they ask you, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Now the minister has already qualified us to even be reconsidered as witnesses. He did that by himself. What you mean reconsidered? For what? What I need to be reconsidered for? Salvation. Are we aware that as a people, even if you weren't born yet, as a people, we rejected God's plan for our salvation, which he presented to us through the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the plan to separate us from white people, as outlined in point number four of the Muslim program. So what I mean by qualifying us for reconsideration is that the punishment for rejection of Allah's messenger is destruction. Can you show me a scripture where in the Bible or the Holy Quran, where a people flip their hand and rejected a prophet or a messenger, in some cases killed them. A messenger, a prophet that God raised up or sent, and Allah's response was, oh, my bad, I'm sorry. I'll just give you another one. Like you're ordering coffee and you send it back because it's not to your liking. No. Only in the case of the black man and woman in America were we given this mercy. That's what the minister is, the human embodiment of the attribute of mercy. We're going to have to advance very quickly you and I, and our understanding. Now listen, now we're at the next level. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad met with God in person. Take it or let it alone, the nation's been here 90 years. We can't give you the whole history 
of the nation of Islam and all the teachings from the beginning every time someone comes to this podium. This is the time when you have to accept truth or not. I have no idea what it was like to meet with God. I have no idea what it would be like to meet the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I continue to quake when I'm about to enter a room or speak on the phone with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And I think we all should be, frankly. But think about it. Master Farid Muhammad meets this young man, Elijah Poole, struggling up from the deep south in cold Detroit, Michigan, depressed and down like we all are in white America, but that was during the depression. That's what they named it. Master Farad Muhammad, this, this sort of otherworldly human being, speaking Arabic, coming from a place called Mecca in Saudi Arabia, which our people never heard of. They barely been out of Black Bottom, Detroit. We're barely out of slavery. This man says things and does things that are absolutely mind boggling. And we are awed even today getting a portion of this advanced knowledge. But for prophecy to be fulfilled, there is a process. First, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad had to submit obey, recognize God in a man. Because the first thing God has to do is destroy spookism. But in order for us to be reconnected to our rightful place, someone had to submit and have the special character of humility to submit to a man who only came up out of the south of Georgia, whose grandparents worked the fields in the south. Because Master Farted Muhammad, though connected to us through his father, did not come up out of the experience of slavery. And these are the people he is after. In order for this process to take root and for us to earn our redemption, someone from among us had to overcome black inferiority and reject white superiority and through his own humility be able, be given the sight to see God in a descendant of slaves. This is essential to becoming a redeemer of self and others because the minister told us when we see any of each other, we see God. Even if it's not developed, even if it's been mismanaged or misaligned, by nature, we are the original people. We submit to Allah. We possess some of the attributes of Allah. And when we go out in the streets, we can't look at Puki or Kanisha and say, oh, th there's nothing there. You can't walk past the weak. You can't walk past the wicked and call yourself a follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You must possess this special characteristic of humility. Everybody can't sit down with God, with the Supreme Ruler, though he did raise up 25,000 in Detroit. But we had to reverse our slave mind. And that could never be done unless one of us at least could see God, not only in an original man, but in a descendant of slaves. And don't say it didn't have to be done because there was a time when Master Fadid Muhammad was ready to say, 
I'm done. It was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad who prayed for an extension of time. Now we've reached the end or moving toward the end of Allah's mercy. But had it not been for this one humble brother, Minister Louis Farrakhan, we would not qualify for redemption because we ourselves could not be shown the quality and the characteristic of humility that is necessary to be redeemed and to redeem others. The minister is a visionary. He lives under a different system than we do or the system of this world. Hopefully we are leaving that system of this world. And engaging in this revelatory course is one of the requirements needed to follow him into that system. He has taught us that once we attain mastery of self, there will be no more devil on the earth. In order to get where the teacher is, we the student must know his vision, but we have to do more than that. We have to do what he has done. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, when you see him, look at him. See means to perceive through your visual capability, physically. Look means direct your attention to. We have to examine, analyze, and correct self as he has done. So when coronavirus, as I bring this to the uh, close, when coronavirus was characterized by the World Health Organization as a pandemic, March 11th, 2020, do you know where the students of Minister Farrakhan were if we were obedient to his directives? We were in study guide number 14, respect for authority. Out of nowhere, our movement was severely limited in a way that none of us know in our lifetime. We were told to go inside, do not come out unless it's to a pharmacy or a grocery store and then go right back home. Confronting our natural dislike for obedience to authority that we don't agree with has aided us in coping with the sudden restrictions on our movement and the loss of daily services and activities. That unit of study teaches us from the Quran, we obey those in authority as long as they are in authority, even if we disagree, unless it conflicts with our religion. So we had exquisite preparation of the mind right at the time that this came down. And as an extra show of mercy, in fact, grace, what falls at that time? Ramadan, Ramadan. So we were able to go inside, not only the house, but inside of self in a way that we have not been able to do. Respect for authority going on during this time. Now we're in the house. We're around people that we stay outside all day to avoid. Now we got to confront the people in our family, the people that live in our household, confront ourselves, and lo and behold, we're on study guide 15, the characteristic of humility. At a time when we needed a tool to facilitate peace in the home and society and protect ourselves from a warped perspective of ourselves. The minister said of humility, it is a sure means of salvation. Now, we have just completed the law of God. 
right at the time when the criterion gave the inhabitants of the earth the law and the will of God. So now we're done living under the law of white supremacy. Now we move in this week, next Friday, to study guide 17, hypocrisy and conspiracy. You wouldn't have known, I wouldn't have known the sequence of these study guides and the way Allah revealed them to the minister, how they would align perfectly with these final days. Hypocrisy and conspiracy. He wrote no cover letter for that study guide. 14, 15, and 16, he wrote letters. You need to read those letters and get with some people and study. Hypocrisy and conspiracy, he goes straight in. Now, two things trigger the actual plot and the move to kill Jesus. 2,000 years ago was the prophetic Jesus. Right now, we're in the fullness of time witnessing the actual Jesus and the fulfillment of prophecy. Two things occur that trigger the move on the plot to kill Jesus. And these things happened July 4th. In fact, they've started to move into actuality at 2018 Savior's Day. But this is a world so steeped in lies and falsehood that make us deaf, dumb, and blind that God can put something in front of us and we don't see it. So here we are getting mercy again. July 4th for the last time, and this time fully. These two things both occurred. Number one, Jesus exposes Satan, and you already heard Brother Ishmael speak on how that has sent them into a rage. The second thing that occurs is Jesus identifies himself, and he has done that. So the plot is not coming, it's in progress. In order for it to actualize, there must be a Judas. We were in the garden July 4th. Was Judas there? Is it possible he or she left that day to go and conspire with the enemy? Let's not look around at people. Let's look at ourselves. Anybody can be made a Judas. That's why we need this course of study, and we need to obey the law. So as I close as a witness to the truth in my little area, I'm only taking you through the evidence I know of that can help us raise from belief to certainty. Because we're not going to get through this with just belief. We're going to have to be certain. So now you see a man at the final level so completely aligned with the mind of God, he's not only predicting what will happen, he's making things happen. He said, Florida, are you becoming the epicenter of the coronavirus? I asked God to do that. I asked him for that. I asked God for that. I just want to show you that the man talking to you has power with God. I'm not fake, I'm the real deal. Because of you, Florida, those who were run out of Cuba, who were members of the Jewish community, who lost everything, your hatred for Fidel Castro has caused America to be blind now, 90 miles from Florida, our Cuban family, when the plague broke out, they went to Wuhan. And with the Chinese, they corrected this, and they drove the virus out of Wuhan. 
Don't we need something that Cuba has? But you have an embargo on Cuba. So let's close. I said that three times, closing, but for real this time. Let's address very quickly this mandatory vaccine. Minister Farrakhan told Mr. Dershowitz, Dr. Fauci, Mr. and Mrs. Gates, and that group, and any of the states who may be planning to implement it, that we are not taking their vaccine for COVID-19. We're not taking it. And he said, if there is an effort to force it on us, that will be a declaration of war on us. But I've had people ask questions and study and on my Elevated Places program, what are we going to do? What are we going to do if we say no? It's nothing for you to be frightened about. They're the ones that should be frightened. In the coming weeks, we're going to have ongoing discussion about this matter and about this vaccine that is being fast-tracked to market even as, as I speak. Now, yes, the COVID-19 virus, this pestilence, it is capable of killing a person, and it has killed thousands of people, without question. So has influenza. So has cancer. So has hunger. So has gun violence. So has diabetes, kidney disease. Heart disease is the number one killer in the world, and it kills over one million people in America each and every single year. So why is this virus so different? The source, again, much to the chagrin of Satan, was identified by Minister Farrakhan when he said Allah sent it. So here's what we have to see. When Allah sends something, it may have a different impact in a different way than we're accustomed to things. People who are trying to repent, people who are trying to obey God, don't respond to God's actions the same way as the people who follow Satan and take Satan as a God besides Allah. Now, when Allah sends something, it gets your attention. It brings everything to a standstill. It exposes everything. It forces you and I to confront the reality of the life we have been living and how deviant we have been. You cannot step outside of his judgment nor escape its impact. But let's look at why this virus is different. What makes it different is what it has exposed in the system called America. Remember Minister Farrakhan's Savior's Day message was entitled, The Unraveling of a Great Nation, and three weeks later, the United States came to a screeching halt. One of the major things that this virus has exposed is the health care system, or lack thereof, of the United States. We have been taught that an aim of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is to destroy the so-called medical profession. Why? Because it is a culture of drugs. It is not a culture of healing. Now listen, when this virus showed up in the United States, it revealed greed, it revealed incompetence, it revealed the wicked mindset of this nation. This is a place built on kidnapping, murder, rape, 
forced labor, lying, stealing, and terrorism. And it is sustained by all of the above through institutions based upon anti-black racism, sexism, materialism, and an inordinate nationalism. COVID virus humiliated the United States, proving that she is actually the so-called third world country that she labels all the nations that are led and populated by people of color. It is you, America, that are the third world country. Why? Because you don't have a soul. You don't have a heart. You are a mean, selfish bully of a country. You hate anybody that needs help, especially when you're the reason they need the help. You make your people sick. You allow multinational corporations to sell nicotine, alcohol, fake food, products full of carcinogens. You pay your essential workers, which COVID revealed, who the real service providers are in this nation. You pay your essential workers less than they need to live because you were built on free labor, so you hate to pay anybody. Your law enforcement is totally corrupt. The police, trained by the Israeli military to kill black people, especially our men and our children. You hate to give care and assistance. You hate the elderly. You hate babies and children. You hate the descendants of your former slaves. You do not have a culture of healing. You do not care for the sick. So when you have a health problem, beloved, in this country, you don't get care. You get a prescription. You don't go in a hospital. You go to Walgreens or Walmart or CVS or whatever and you get your pills. America is the biggest drug dealer on the planet Earth, along with New Zealand. Now, how New Zealand coupled with America, I don't know, but there's a reason. But the United States and New Zealand are the only two countries on the Earth where pharmaceutical companies can advertise directly to the consumer. Everywhere else is illegal. So we, the consumer, watch commercials. Then we go to the doctor and ask the doctor, can you give me that purple pill that I saw on television? And when they advertise, not only are they allowed to do that, but the sell part of the commercials are given on a sixth grade level vocabulary. The adverse effects are given on a college level vocabulary. Oh, this pill is awesome. It's going to make you happy. It's going to make you jump up and down. And you're going to hug your husband and love your children. And uh, if you grow a third eye and if you develop uh, some fatal events, call 911. And if your arms fall off and if the fatal events, we all get one fatal event per person. If I take the pill and I have a fatal event, I'm not calling anybody, but I guess I'm cured. Chris Rock told it right. He said, when you tell the vendor what it is you want, that's not a doctor, that's a drug dealer. So when COVID-19 arrived, this is a respiratory disease that attacks the lungs. It left people unable to breathe, which means they need professional medical care 
in a hospital. You and I can handle a stomach virus no matter how much we suffer, but we can deal with a stomach virus at home. But when the lungs go down, you need help and you need it immediately. We can go weeks without food, days without water, but we can only be stopped from taking in air for a few minutes before we die. We need air more than we need anything in life as an essential. This is how Allah made our organism. The whole planet found out that big, bad, state-of-the-art, advanced USA has only one million hospital beds with a population of 330 million people. This virus, this virus, what is it? What is this thing? The reason they reacted in panic is because they didn't have the only two things they sell drugs and vaccines. How long do we have to stay in a state of emergency while you don't know what to do? This CDC, real quick, the latest god of America, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control. Now, its full name is actually the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. But you never heard, hear prevention in public. They drop that because they don't do that. For instance, at no time, on no day, have you seen any of these so-called experts all over the television given the fake news tell the people about vitamin D3 while other countries have instructed their citizens, make sure you have sufficient levels of vitamin D3 because it has been proven by a multitude of studies that it heavily impacts susceptibility to contracting the virus and defeating the virus, and nearly everyone that died from it had in common a vitamin D deficiency. Nobody comes on and talks about exercise, fresh air, how to eat to live by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan demanded July 4th that this embargo on Cuba be lifted. We are done being held hostage by our former slave owner and be submitted, subjected to their solution to the problem when their only solution is death. The Wall Street Journal did a huge investigation and published an expose last month showing that more than half the deaths in New York, uh, New York City attributed to COVID were not from the virus. They were from incompetence, neglect, inability to handle the volume of cases, patients left on ventilators, nobody monitoring them, and they died alone, short staffing, pulling people out of their specialty and putting them in areas they knew nothing about, giving medical students early degrees so that they could put them in the hospitals. This was not a flood. This was not a, pl a plane crash. This is a mystery virus that even the experts know very little about, and you've got medical students handling the patients. They sent people with the virus home, most of them black. Or if they were brought in from a nursing home with the virus, guess where they sent them? Back to the nursing home where infections spread like wildfire. Almost 50% of the cases in this country come up out of nursing homes. And what do you do in the interim? You yell and scream at the people. You take down their livelihoods. You close the schools. You say, go online and go to school, online. 
When most black households do not have internet access and the laptops and tablets and ability to connect, you saw on TV all of these news shows, the upper class and wealthy white people, here I am at home on my laptop with my big yard and my children playing outside in the tutor. Oh, and don't go around the grandparents. In the black community, that's the caretaker, the grandparents. Don't go around those grandchildren, they're gonna kill you. You tell us to maintain social distance, and you should, but why do you let billion-dollar thieving airlines squeeze passengers in an airplane like sardines in the one situation where infection is almost guaranteed? close quarters and no fresh flowing air. Wear the mask, but take it off for your beverage or your food. <laughs> then they have the nerve to tell us, if you can afford it, buy the seat next to you. Where's the Democratic Congress? Where's the Black Caucus? Pass a law since you gave these people billions of dollars and tell them, stop selling the middle seat. Stop filling up every row on the plane. Why aren't they limited in percentage of capacity like regular people? And by the way, Florida, who Minister Farrakhan brought down divine wrath on you, Florida, why in God's name is Disney World open? See, when you develop enough pathology in the mind, you start losing intelligence. You, your IQ literally drops, and you can become a simpleton from being so wicked. Your brain cells literally start to dry up. We're not closing Disney World. I wonder why. Could it be the multi-billion, nearly trillion dollars of assets that they practically own the state of Florida? You say, wear a mask when you are indoors and cannot and cannot maintain six feet distance. Okay, that slows down the spread, but how do you get rid of it? We want to know how to get rid of it. Get a vaccination. No. Minister Farrakhan said, this pestilence came from heaven. And to get rid of it, we have to go to heaven. We have to repent. We have to reconnect with God. Since February, we've been listening to Mr. Anthony Fauci, the leading infectious disease expert in America, who oft times throws his hands up in the air and said, oh my God, I don't, I don't know what's going on. This is the level of expertise we're being confronted with. That's why the minister told the executive council, we gotta gather our people. This country is under chastisement. They can't think their way out of a paper bag, let alone deal with a virus that continually mutates. Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, said what came to New York is not what came out of Wuhan. What came out of Wuhan went to Europe, primarily Italy, where it mutated about a hundred times. He said Donald Trump, President Trump, closed off the borders to China, but America never closes borders to Europe. So between December and March, three million people came in this country from Europe, and they brought the virus with them. So this is a wholly different 
version of what came out of Wuhan, whatever it was, it's not that now because it continually mutates. Uh, Dr. Fauci, back in March, you said we don't need to wear a mask because you, uh, we didn't need it back in February. A couple of weeks ago, you admitted you lied. And the way you characterized it, you said things change, they evolve. No, you said you're the leading expert on infectious disease. You said uh, we don't need to wear a mask. But you said recently that you actually didn't tell the truth because you wanted the health care workers to have them. And you were afraid that there weren't enough to go around. See, all roads lead to the vaccine. And I just have to show you how, out of their own mouths, the truth of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad saying this is a culture of drugs is borne witness to. This is uh, on flu vaccinations, the, uh, the U.S. Department of Health. I'm just going to quote these couple of sentences. Why you get vaccinated every year. And by the way, if you've had the influenza vaccine the last several years, you're going to test positive for coronavirus because it too is the coronavirus. By definition, a vaccine contains the disease that you're being uh, vaccinated from under the theory that if a little bit of the disease is put in your body, your immune system will be aroused to fight it. And thereby, when you get confronted with the real one, you won't get it. The problem is artificial attacks on the body are recognized by the body, and this suppresses the immune system over a period of time. But look what they wrote. Flu vaccinations are used to diminish the effects of the flu season. Not the person, the season. And what they mean by that is what they call the burden of influenza, the economic impact of the American people getting ill. So the shots are given to lower the number of absent days from work for these big corporations. And that is why, according to the U.S. Department of Health, a growing number of large companies provide employees with flu shots, either free or at a low cost. It's all based on economics. And speaking of economics, these imposter Jews call us anti-Semitic, any of us, in a nanosecond. If you point out the obvious, which is that they own or control every facet of the economy. I have the distinction myself of being on the front page of the ADL's website a couple of years ago and last fall being removed as an invited speaker to a black conference on reparations at San Diego State University. Listen to what I said. A black students conference on reparations. But an offended Jewish professor at the school objected to it and brought down the heat on the black student union and called it off. I was called on local TV, newspapers, everywhere, a quote, vicious anti-Semite just like her teacher. So all I can say is call everybody, tell them we made it. Happy to be in his company. But why do you, you imposter Jews I'm speaking to, deny that you control everything and call it anti-Semitic for someone to say that? Then right after someone disagrees with you, you start shutting down media outlets. That's control, that's power. You start dragging out house servants to condemn the minister. 
And all of them sound like parrots and dolphins because you give them the same little script. And when any person says anything supportive of the minister or his work, you drag them through the mud, you threaten their livelihood. And if they don't back down, you strip them of their livelihood. You own the banks, the professional sports teams, real estate, the retail outlets. And this is why um, Shannon Sharp, the former NFL player who's Hall of Fame and an NFL analyst, this is what he quoted. Because as quick as you came after Nick Cannon and Deshaun Jackson and others, see, whenever you, as Brother Ishmael said, we're coming together. So the, as, as you knock down one, another one steps up. This is why all of us have to step up and step out and witness. You don't need a rostrum or a mic. Say it in wherever you are, at the workplace, in a conversation. Defend truth. And when someone says Farrakhan this or Farrakhan that, ask them, where did you hear that? What is the source of that? And what proof do you have of it? But here's what Shannon Sharp said, quote, after Deshaun Jackson was attacked. When whites say something bad in the NFL, they get Tony Dungy to clean it up. Where is the person in the Jewish community that will come to our defense? Tony Dungy is the first black coach to win a Super Bowl, and he's a vocal house servant for white people. And so our people are beginning to hit back because black tolerance for anti-black racism is at an all time low and we're floating around zero and pretty soon we'll be in the minus column. But we're at the point where if you hit us, we're going to hit back. You say you don't control our people when you terrorize them. You make them publish lengthy apologies. And when I read these apologies, it reminds me of when people are kidnapped taken hostage, and the kidnapper writes the note and makes the hostage read the note. It doesn't even sound normal because these are terrorists. You don't know what they take somebody in the room and threaten them with. And I close with this last one. You see, I, you see that's the end of it. I have to mention Patrick D. John. This is the first black Christian president of the Jewish Bar Association in Chicago. And he has done a fact check on Farrakhan. And I, I'm going to answer him on each point, but I just want to respond because we're not going to give him airtime. We're not going to repeat what he says, except this. He's, he, he takes you right to the point on the tape because he's writing in the Jewish Times where Farrakhan said, whites are, quote, dominant by nature. They are not a natural people. They are a grafted people. Their father was a liar and a murderer, so whites are born with lies and murder in their hearts. Fact check. Prior to white Christians, not Jews, enslaving Africans, there was no such thing as white supremacy in the world. The ancient Greeks and ancient Romans had no concept of discrimination based on skin color. White supremacy was born in the 1500s to justify enslaving blacks, as though that's okay. If racism is in the DNA of whites, why weren't whites racist prior to the 1500s? Well, you don't need to be a history major to answer that, even though I am a history major. You don't even have to go to black true history. You go to their history. You know why we didn't see it before the 1500s? Because they were contained in Europe. 
That's why we didn't see it. You answered your own question and proved what he said. You said it was born in the 1500s in order to justify enslaving blacks. Well, my nature can be one thing, but the environment I'm in determines whether I can act in accord with my nature. They spent thousands of years crawling around on all fours in the caves of Europe until Musa raised them up. But the moment they came up out of Europe, the moment they hit the shores of Africa, this hell began for us. And so don't be so quick to jump out based on what your boss says. Minister Farrakhan asked them for a showdown or demanded a showdown a couple of years ago and they refused. So the sun moves on to its destination and we're past that now. We've had the showdown. Now you are going to experience the birth of a nation within a nation. And I leave you with this, beloved. You have to know when you've won. Don't act like a loser. Act like a winner. The Kansas City Chiefs locker room is not the same atmosphere as the San Francisco 49ers. So you stop running around here, what they going to do, what they get, all of that is over. They not going to do nothing. We are the winner, and all we have to do is keep our eye on the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, who has carried us this far. We're not going to turn around now. May Allah bless us all with love and the light of understanding. Thank you for your patience. Assalamu alaikum. All, all praises due to Allah, brothers and sisters, for a beautiful lecture by the national spokesperson of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, Sister Dr. Ava Muhammad. Before you tune out of today's program, brothers and sisters, we just have a few brief announcements. First, if you liked what you heard today and you feel like it was the truth and good for our people, uh, there is a join now button on your screen. We ask that you click that button submit your information and learn more about what it is to be a registered member of the Nation of Islam. Also at this time, brothers and sisters, there are principles in Islam and principles in Christianity and all of the religions, what we give and the cause that we believe in. So if you enjoyed today's lecture and you have a little something that you can give to help the cause of freedom, justice, and equality, in the Holy Quran it says, whatever you give, desiring Allah's pleasures, he promises to give manifold of his mercies back to us. So at this time on your screen, you will also see a donate now button. We ask that you click that one and just uh, give whatever you can in charity. Next week, brothers and sisters, we look forward to hearing a powerful lecture from Minister Ishmael Muhammad, who will be back with a lecture entitled The Plan of the Enemy to Kill Farrakhan. He's going to lay it all out, so we invite you to tune back in to NOI.org next Sunday at 10 a.m. Central, but also throughout the week we have several meetings as well on Wednesdays and Fridays at 7.30 p.m. Uh, join us for our Wednesday study series, which is the time of what must be done. And then on Fridays, our study series is self-improvement, the basis of community development. We encourage you to come back to NOI.org again throughout the week, 7.30, Wednesdays and Fridays, to learn more. Um, we also encourage you, brothers and sisters, to log on to store.finalcall.com. In this time, it is uh, necessary for us to be equipped with data and facts. Um, so we want you to purchase the secret relationship between blacks and Jews book series. Again, that web address is store dot final call dot com and also tune in to final call radio it is a beautiful platform brothers and sisters owned by your nation of islam we encourage you to tune in 24 hours a day 365 days of the year listen to live excerpts and clips and lectures from the honorable minister louis farrakhan and also some of his music as well and then last but not least we encourage you to support the digital edition of the final call newspaper you can find that at finalcalldigital.com. Again, finalcalldigital.com. And what used to be the hard copies that you will find on the street corner, you can now get it delivered directly to your iPad or your cell phone. With that being said, brothers and sisters, please stand as we close out today's meeting in prayer. Attention prayer. 
In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we worship and thine aid do we seek. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy favors, and not the path of those whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. Amen. Assalamu alaikum family.